What's up guys? So it's been just over one month since I started running a tour relay at home. You can see my uptime right here in the upper right hand corner. And I just wanted to update you guys on how it's been going in case you're thinking of running a relay yourself because generally internet connections and VPS services, things like that, they tend to bill on a monthly cycle. So this should give you an idea of bandwidth requirements and other things like that, which you'll need for your relay. So in one month, my relay managed to use up 8.2 terabits of data. At least that's what the upload was. Then the download was 8.1 terabits. And keep in mind during the beginning of a relay's life cycle, um, it's not going to use as much bandwidth. It takes about a week or two, at least in my case, to get the relay more integrated into the network. And in order for it to earn all of these flags, which I'll talk about in a minute, but at first your relay isn't going to route as much traffic or it's not gonna have as much bandwidth per second. Uh, because it's just not as trusted. But as it becomes more trusted, as it becomes more integrated into the Tor network, that is going to steadily climb and you're also going to start earning some more of these flags. And also being able to handle the amount of circuits that are being created on your relay, that has a really big impact on bandwidth. And if your relay fails to handle a certain amount of circuits, then the network isn't going to send as much traffic your way. So you have to make sure that you actually have all of the resources available to handle the bandwidth limit that you set. Uh, in my case, the bandwidth limit that I set actually wasn't technically the bottleneck. So I have it set to do one gigabit per second and one gigabit per second burst. Now I do have a one gigabit connection here at my house. That's the connection for the entire network. So technically you don't want to have your relay set up like that, uh, assuming that you have other devices on the network because obviously the relay is not going to be able to utilize the whole thing. But I just said it anyway, because I knew that my relay wasn't going to use anywhere near the limit to get close to my entire network or even uh, get close to the true limit that this would have available to it uh, left over from my other computers. Uh, in fact, as you can see, the observed bandwidth, the highest observed at least for this month was 7.2 megabits per second. And last month, I believe it got as high as 14. So what I believe the bottleneck is for this relay is actually the CPU. So this relay is running on a ThinkPad with a Core 2 Duo. It's also running an I2P node and it has automatic updates configured. So my theory is when it updates or it just has a lot running, like right now, uh, even as a relay, it's not really routing a whole lot of traffic. The average currently, well, you can actually see right now that it's only about one megabit per second that it's routing. And it was using, yeah, around 20 to 25% of the CPU. So I, my theory is that when it updates or when it's just got a whole lot of circuits that it's creating, that ends up taxing the CPU too much. I've also heard the fans spin up, so it's definitely doing a whole lot of work, but it has gotten overwhelmed at least a couple of times before. So that causes it to start dropping packets. And then eventually that causes just the amount of traffic that it'll get on an average day to go down. So I'm probably going to take this relay down for maintenance soon and then redeploy it on a more powerful machine. I've been trying to get a Raspberry Pi 4 for a reasonable price, which is asking a lot because right now they're being scalped along with so many other electronics. But if I get my hands on one, I'll probably just do that. Otherwise, I'll try it out on, I have a Core i5 laptop, which I think has four threads. So that should be a bit more equipped to handle the amount of circuits that are getting thrown at this relay and its configuration. So for your own at-home relay, if you want to use a VPS or you want to host your own, I would recommend a four, a CPU with at least four threads, four gigabytes of RAM, but eight is even better. Uh, eight is what I've gotten here. And you can see that with everything running, uh, I think it's using roughly 10%. Let's actually 
just run an htop and make sure. Yeah, so it's running, it's using about one gigabyte of RAM. And again, keep in mind, it's running I2P or I2PD rather. It's running Tor and this is also a, an Arch setup. So it is running system D as well. You could get a little bit leaner, uh, say for example, if you use something that doesn't use system D. And as for your bandwidth limit, of course, if you're dealing with something like a VPS, you're probably going to want to use eight terabytes or more of bandwidth. Um, and like I said, if you stay really stable and you're not dropping circuits, you might end up using 10, 12, or even more terabits of data. So you're probably going to want an unmetered connection, ideally. I know some services offer slower unmetered connections that run at speeds of like 100 megabit up and down, but that would actually be perfect for a Tor relay, at least a middle or a guard like I'm running. Now let's talk about these flags. So I got most of these, actually I got all of these except for the guard flag after about five and a half days of running my relay. And if we switch to my uh, relay's statistics on Tor's site, you can see that uh, that kind of correlates with this bandwidth jump here. So this is when my relay was first discovered and then this is the fifth day that it's been running. So that's the most significant spike in bandwidth that my relay had during its entire life cycle so far. Then on I think it's January 5th is when my bandwidth peaked, but my poor relay couldn't handle it. And then the speed started to decline. So it looks like around maybe four or four and a half uh, megabits per second is an ideal limit for this relay in its current configuration. But like I said, I'm gonna try to get something with a little bit more CPU power and see if that can prevent it from dropping circuits. I could also try repasting the CPU. That might also help it because I did hear its fans spin up and start to go a little bit crazy a couple of times. Uh, now, as far as the rest of the flags go, fast, that just means that my relay is advertised and proven to be fast, which for the Tor network, I believe two megabits a second is enough to be considered fast. A guard relay is, of course, the first hop in the chain of two computers that uh, build individual Tor circuits, or three computers, rather, that build individual Tor circuits. Uh, so my relay could be either one, but it's never going to pick this computer to be both uh, circuit one and circuit two, or at least hop one and hop two. And it's also not going to pick any of my other relays that I control to be part of that same circuit because I have the family string set for all my relays. And you should do the same thing if you're going to be running multiple relays, like one at home and maybe one in your office or uh, one through a VPS. HSDIR means that my relay serves as a hidden service directory, which means that my relay is one of many that are used to help you with finding onion sites. Basically, when you connect to one of those sites, your computer is first going to ask an HSDIR how to reach it, and then we point you to an introduction point to find that hidden service. So we don't exactly know the IP of that hidden service directly, but we know the guy you gotta talk to, and then we point you to him. Uh, running, of course, just means that this Tor service is running. Stable means that the relay has been running without any issues for at least seven days. V2DIR means that my relay supports the V2 directory protocol, so you get this by enabling the DIR port, which makes your relay act as a directory mirror that relays can query for information about how to reach other relays. Uh, so really helping everybody connect to what they're trying to find in uh, Onion Land. And this is an optional thing that you can set up. Uh, it's actually not recommended to uh, set it up if you don't have a lot of bandwidth because that is one of the things that causes your relay to use up a lot more bandwidth. And valid means that my relay is so heckin' cute and valid. I'm just kidding. Valid uh, just means that you're running a version of Tor that is not broken. So usually the most up-to-date version of Tor, just making sure it's up-to-date, is a good way to uh, avoid that. And that your relay hasn't been engaging in any suspicious behavior. And 
takes about maybe five days to get that. Like I said, it took five days for me to get all of these flags except for the guard flag. So that's how you end up getting at least all of these different ones. And there's some more that you can get like uh, being an exit node, but of course I'm gonna have to first find a good service, like a good VPS service that I can use to actually run an exit node. So I'll update you guys with that once I figure it out. But that's it for my tour relay updates and tips. Leave a like and comment on this video to hack the algorithm. Have a great rest of your day.